and you are illegally here. And that's all. I want back up the border. رنگین کمان میجه گزارش های فرهنگی هنری و اجتماعی نویسنده و گوینده فرنوش رام دکتر حبیب لوی نوشتن خاطرات خود را در سن 83 سالگی در لس آنجلس آغاز کرد Yani, dar sal Habib Levy wrote his memoirs in 1980 at the age of 83. He writes, I was born 25 centuries after my Hebrew ancestors immigrated to Iran from Babylon. Freed by Cyrus the Great of Persia, who gave leave to many Hebrews to settle on the lands of Susa and Pasagod. Many Iranian Jews of this age are descendants of those ancient immigrants, making Jews one of the oldest continuous inhabitants of Iran. I was born in October of 1896 in the Jewish ghetto of Tehran. My old age and trembling hands make penmanship difficult. Yet the compelling desire to chronicle my life has caused me to utilize a typing machine. My Hebrew name is Yazrael. Son of Rahmim of Khodadad. My grandmother was Senobah, daughter of Yazrel, the healer who served the royal court of the Iranian monarch Nasseruddin Shah. Hakim Yazrel helped the people of the Jewish ghetto of Tehran. In 1904, I attended Alion School through high school. Upon graduating at the age of 14, I began working for my French-educated brother's dental practice. In the winter of 1911, by carriage and ship, I traveled to the city of Baku on the Russian border and journeyed to Austria and then Paris via rail. Since I knew French, I was admitted to the Paris Dental Academy and graduated at the age of 17 as the youngest graduate in the history of that institution. My return to Iran coincided with the outbreak of World War I. I started a new dental practice in Tehran with my brother. I also practiced dentistry in Hamadan and Sanandaj for some time. At the end of World War I, when I was 23, I wedded Zolekha, daughter of Soleiman Zahri Haim. In 1919, I was the first Jewish Iranian to serve as a lieutenant in the Khazak Brigade in the capacity of military doctor. After 16 years of steady rise, I was declared colonel in charge of the medical wing of the army. During this time, Reza Shah picked me as his personal dentist. Among my patients were numerous Qajar princes and Satar Khan. At the end of World War I, many diseases plagued the populace. At this time, with the aid of my sons, I started the Organ and Drug Company, which became one of the largest companies in the Middle East.
approximately 20 years before Israel's declaration of independence, I traveled to Jerusalem. In fact, during this period, I traveled to Israel more than 10 times via ground and air routes. In the course of this travel, I became acquainted with many of the great leaders of that country. The greatest achievement of my life was my authorship of the history of the Jews of Iran, which took a half century to write and was a labor of love and divine inspiration. Dr. Habib Levy, may his soul rest in peace, passed away in the city of Los Angeles in 1984. He was buried in Jerusalem in accordance with his wishes. His death did not end his exemplary way of life. His friends and supporters of his lifelong work founded the Habib Levy Cultural and Educational Foundation to continue his mission. The Habib Levy's foundation's mission was in part inspired by the following excerpt from Habib Levy's book, The History of the Jews of Iran. The only way to eradicate the hostility and mistrust among our nations is to know each other. Habib Levy's goal in publishing his book was to draw the Iranian nation's attention to the achievements, trials and tribulations of the Iranian Jews who have been an integral part of the Iranian nation for the last 2,700 years. Inspired by this idea, in 1995, supporters of Dr. Levy's ideology founded the Habib Levy Cultural and Educational Foundation with the express goal of bringing people of different backgrounds to exchange and gain knowledge from one another. The goals and ideas of Dr. Levy were of such importance that his supporters determined to organize a foundation as this would be the most suitable vehicle to carry forth his life's work. One of the first goals of the foundation was to disseminate Dr. Levy's ideology by publishing his works, beginning with his magnum opus, The Comprehensive History of the Jews of Iran. The second undertaking of the foundation was the publication of Laws of Moses, followed by such works as God's Good Earth, and in search of truth. To augment the published works, the foundation has been and will continue to organize seminars and discussions on various topics in universities and other institutions of higher learning. My name is Brian Copenhaver, and I'm the provost of the College of Letters and Science. I've been the first recipient of the uh, Distinguished, visit, uh, distinguished Habib Levy visiting professorship in Judeo-Persian. Professor Amnon Netzer will commence offering a course in the, the program of, Iran, of Iranian studies on Judeo-Persian. In 1996, as the delegate of UCLA's Near Eastern Languages and Cultures Department, I contacted the Levy Foundation to establish a visiting professorship in Judeo-Persian studies at UCLA. The department intended to create a course that introduces students to the literature of Iranian Jews, which is written in the Persian language but in Hebrew characters. In addition, the course was to familiarize students with the historical and intellectual background of Iranian Jewry. The generous endowment of the Levy Foundation actualized this vision. The course named Iranian 131 was first offered in the spring of 2000, at which time it was taught by Professor Amnon Netzer. Since 2001, the department has designated me to conduct this course that has been one of the most popular and successful classes in the major of Iranian studies. In 1958, when I began the first transmission of the radio voice of Israel's Persian programming and facilitated the founding of a library of works related to the task, I came across the first two parts of Dr. Habib Levy's The History of the Jews of Iran. 
This was the first instance where a book about the history of the Jews of Iran had been written. After two years, the third installment was published. This inspired me to study and research the lives and times of our forefathers who inhabited the land of Iran for the past 2,500 years. In 1963, with the encouragement of Professor Ehsan Yasharter, I delved into the history of Iranian Jewry. Dr. Levy's works were a beacon that directed me both personally and professionally. His research opened many doors for my own future research. I was delighted to find that, through the Habib Levy Foundation, Dr. Levy's children managed to achieve the monumental task of establishing a course at UCLA. In the introduction of his epic composition, Shahnameh, the master Persian poet, Ferdowsi, recited, I suffered much in this 30 years of labor to bring back to life what was left of Iranian heritage. Likewise, Dr. Habib Levy's 30-year-long labor of love in collecting, editing, and composing the history of the Jews of Iran may very well have a similar effect in the years to come. He has introduced the traditions and culture of the oldest and possibly most neglected Iranian group, the Jews of Iran, to the world at large. Dr. Levy traveled extensively to the world's greatest libraries, surveyed and collected information from more than 700 books, and interviewed countless scholars as part of establishing the foundation necessary to write his magnum opus, The History of the Jews of Iran. Throughout history, Jewish scholars and leaders have written extensively on religious matters. Yet seldom has there been a sociological or historical survey of the Jewish people and cultures. Dr. Levy's History of the Jews of Iran was written for us as a document that chronicles our past. It is our duty to introduce this important work to the world. ما اقدام به تهیه این فیلم کردیم برای اینکه به جمعا دوستان من We produced this film to inform people about the Levy Foundation and about Habib Levy's ideas and teachings regarding Judaism, as well as his beliefs with respect to the proper course of conduct and dialogue between different cultures, in order to create understanding between diverse people across the world. This film is not made for commercial purposes. Rather, it is an educational vehicle meant to convey Habib Levy's enlightening teachings, one of the most important of which is that Judaism is not a religion of enmity and segregation, but instead one of understanding and cooperation. Love your fellow man as you love your kindred.